Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining our meeting. The board um, started our meeting at 5.30 and went into executive session. We're now ready to start the public portion of our uh, meeting. So I ask that you please stand and join me in the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As we start our meeting, I'd like to uh, go through our mission and vision. Uh, our mission is to create a culture of academic excellence through inclusive and innovative learning opportunities uh, for the whole child. And our vision is to empower all learners to reach their full potential in a globally competitive world. I need a motion for the approval of the agenda. So moved. Second. Mrs. Logan. Mr. Cumberford. Aye. Mrs. Bitter. Aye. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mr. Ballant. Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the minutes. So, second. Second. Any corrections, comments from the board? Mrs. Logan. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mrs. Bitter. Aye. Mr. Comerford. Aye. Mr. Ballant. Minutes are approved. I did uh, forget as we started, I wanted to make a similar comment I made at our last meeting. Uh, we are we are moving to or we have moved to to board docs, um, which is our online agenda. Um, it is uh, going to be an excellent tool for all of us to work through and with. Um, so I appreciate the publications as we work through this evening, um, and all all learn it and uh, we're becoming more and more efficient every day. So um, if you notice it's a little different or a little um, odd at times, we're we're all learning and trying as we go along. So thank you very much. Lifelong learners, Ms. Capone. That's right. Uh, we'll uh, come on to public participation. I do have one um, public participation. Mrs. Logan or Mr. Long, did we receive any additional ones? Um, Ms. Fetters? Yes. So I'm Trisha Fetters. Um, I live at 5541 Hagawa. It's the Brick Ranch right there. Uh, I spoke at last month's meeting as well about the detention basin with BH Green. Um, I'm really just here to bring it to your attention again to make sure you're aware that it's an issue and a concern. Um, it is not being maintained. I mean, you can walk out there tonight and see the weeds. It's not being mowed. Uh, we were told it was going to be mowed. mowed. Um, Brad, Mark Zimmerly, myself, my husband met with the engineers. Um, that was beneficial in the fact that we got a little bit more of understanding of how the detention basin is to work. Um, the engineers explained to us that that rock four bay that I had mentioned last month that had washed out did its job. That when the water comes in and rushes, the rock's job is for it to sweep away, to slow down. That rock four bay is still washed out. It has not been rebuilt. I've asked the question and posed it, but I, I'm asking myself, why is that my responsibility to ask those sorts of questions? Um, the east side of the property on Stonehenge got a new swale and berm installed to limit the amount of water flowing towards their property. And I feel like my property <laughs> directly next to the detention basin is getting no reassurance of that whatsoever. So, this is a huge concern for myself, my family, and I would just appreciate it that, you know, you take some time and really try to work to get a solution that works for everyone. Trust me, I don't want to be a thorn in anyone's side. I've got bigger issues to worry about. So uh, just wanted to bring that to light again this month as well. Thank you. Great. Thanks for uh, coming to our board meeting. Um, you know, not, we typically don't comment on public particip participation right away. Uh, but there it has been a lot that's going on. I did ask Mr. Lovell to just pre prepare a short update on what we're working on um, and kind of answer some of these concerns. Sure, and I'll try to address some of your specific questions, but um, I do want to address the, the east side properties that got the swale. Um, that was many, many months of discussion around how we were going to tackle that situation. Um, so while it might have looked like that solution just kind of happened, there was a lot of work with our um, our civil engineers to be able to come out to understand the flow of the water, 
Um, so we wouldn't dump more water on the properties and such. And so we're actually taking the very similar approach to what we did there with the detention basin in the back of your property. Um, Mrs. Feders is right. We worked with our civil engineers from Kleiningers who um, were the civil engineers on the project and do other work for us in the district to understand the scope of the basin. Um, what we want to try to do is understand, um, number one, is it functioning is as built, meaning how they built it, is it actually doing what it was designed to build? Because I think the first important piece of information is that um, how that was built is actually two spec for the state and the county standards. It's a micro pool, so it's designed to have some water in it. Uh, Mrs. Fetters and I have had many conversations around we both disagree with how it was designed in regards to the function of it. And so that's why we're working towards a better solution. Um, this whole week, we've had our topographers out there looking at the site to capture the pictures of the as-built. That's the first step because we have to understand and identify, was it built correctly? Once we understand if it was built correctly, then we can go towards solutions. I saw them out there today, so they're back there again. Um, I know the rain has put a put a little bit of a pause on some of their work. Um, so once we get that information back from um, Kleiningers, we'll then have uh, another meeting to discuss what are the next steps. Um, there is an alternative solution to the detention basin in regards to how it can be designed, um, but we can't really have that discussion until we understand fully um, the 100-year the, um, flood dynamic of it, um, the outflow and all those kind of logistics. Um, in regards to maintaining that property, absolutely, our crews need to get out there. We need to mow around it. We need to weed whack. Um, we had talked about that when we were out there. Um, there's two things that we had to hit pause on. Number one, um, we had contractors in that back bus lot. They were ripping up that pavement, that asphalt back there, um, and we had to reseal it and restripe it. So that put a delay with the rain on our crews being able to mobilize and get there with the start of school. And then once the topographers got out there, we didn't want to be in their way as well. So I hear you. I will make sure our folks um, prioritize and get mobilized to get out there and get that done. Um, we just didn't want to create a barrier to anything that was happening in that area to make sure that they captured the work that needed to be done. So I hear you. We'll get it taken care of um, with that. And then the other thing I'll mention as well is that, um, you know, obviously the standing water um, has concerns for us from a school safety standpoint. And so we wanna make sure we're mitigating that. And then also from a health concern from mosquitoes and things like that. Um, and so we have been in contact with the health department, but we're also um, uh, being proactive and doing our best to treat for mosquitoes on the property as well, because we recognize the time frame that's passing between engaging in this um, and looking for a solution to mitigate between the actual fix um, is there's going to be time that passes through there. So. Um, we continue to do our best to work with um, Kleiningers, SHP, and our general contractors, Monarch, um, because we all play into that. And that that is brings me up with the um, the dam that goes in front of there. Um, we've notified Monarch um, that that needs to be rebuilt. Um, they are working with their subcontractor who built it with Kleiningers. And so I will continue to put pressure on them to get out and get that rebuilt. That needs to get done. Uh, but we've had multiple conversations with them about that. Because Ms. Fetters, as she mentioned, that's the one safeguard for fast rains that come through there. Mr. Lovell, any any estimation on timeline from Kleiningers as far as when when the, the residents and the board can expect that there's a solution? Yeah, so the goal was to get the um, topography done this week for the as built. Once they get that information, they said it takes for about a week or two. Because what they do is they come out with their cameras and do everything, then they have to take that data and they have to build models around it. Once they build models, um, they'll then reach back out to us and have that meeting. I've already told our representative from Kleiningers that I want to be proactive and get that meeting on the books, first wait for the model to get in. So my assumption is, is once they get that information, he's going to have a better idea of how long it's going to take internal for them to build the maps. And then I would say we should be able to get a meeting on the books for about three weeks that would lead us to solutions and how we fix the situation. And then ultimately, um, we would come back to the board for approval to get that work done. What about the what about the cleaning up of the area? Can we get on that? This yeah, week? absolutely. So um, now that the asphalt's done, the striping was finished, I believe, yesterday. Um, so they are completely out of that bus lot now. Um, 
And then the topographers, I believe, I will double check with climbers that they're done back there doing what they're going to be doing, but I'll mobilize our crew to get back there and clean all that up. Thank you. Thank you yep. for the update. Absolutely. Mr. Lovell, one quick question. Sure. Just in, in terms of, I know you said your the team is out there looking at whether or not it was installed correctly, but to your knowledge, the crews followed the plans that were approved by Correct. the municipalities and by Hamilton County yes. to install it correctly. But yeah, or, one, or at least double check, right? Absolutely. So, you know, it's our it's our understanding that everything was designed correctly. And if you um, remember, maybe not one of the change orders that came through is we had to expand that basin a little bit. Um, because there was a pipe that was found under the property that was unknown on any Blue Ash or Montgomery map. Um, so they, out of precaution, expanded the basin just a little bit, but it still had the right capacity for water. But the reason I bring that up is that when we did that, um, there were checks on how that site was developed. The as-built is um, ensuring that before we go anywhere else with this project, that the way it was set is how it's supposed to be set by standard for Hamilton County um, in the state of Ohio. You're welcome. Next item on our agenda is uh, master facility update. Mr. Lowe, back to you. <laughs> Are we strategic plan? Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. I missed a strategic plan. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> no, my apologies. I'm happy to talk. <laughs> so uh, we're aware. It goes, back to just, it goes back to just learning board docs. <laughs> Always good to give you an update um, on our strategic plan and, and really the work that our team has been doing in regards to, um, you know, accomplishing the tasks that were involved in our strategic plan. So I want to walk through this with you. I would like you to consider um, some pieces. I definitely would like some feedback from you on a couple of areas. And, you know, doesn't mean we have to have answers today, but I do think long-term discussion is, you know, we're two years into a three-year strategic plan. And at some point we're going to have to come back together and have a refresh discussion because you're going to see a lot of progress uh, on a lot of the goals and objectives that were in our strategic plan and some completion. So um, we'll walk through it. Mr. Um, Long, yep, skip that slide because they're aware of the mission and vision as Mr. Ballant eloquently speaks it at every meeting. So um, obviously with the AVES, we're going to start with academic achievement. Um, looking at and, and I'm not going to read every piece of the slide to you. And I want to, just so that you orient yourself, we've used this slide template before. Uh, for consistency, I felt like it was best to um, reuse it and also change some of the terminology because um, looking at those areas down below, those are our success indicators. How do we know uh, that we're doing well or accomplishing our goals in these areas? So those are holding us accountable. But the stuff in the yellow pane are the things that I wanna talk about tonight and give you the update on progress. And certainly there are a lot of experts in this room that are involved in multiple areas of this strategic plan. So I want them to feel free uh, to jump in and, and share anything that, they, that I might not have covered. But when you look at area number one, I'll just summarize that really quickly without all those words, is that's the curriculum review process that's being led by Mrs. Tompkins. And, She's doing a phenomenal job um, with her team and, and the rest of our staff that are responsible for that uh, major undertaking. And they're working through uh, the ELA implementation, uh, the math course of study. They did make one adjustment to what was in the, the previous strategic plan document that you've seen, which is they move social studies up and move science back. And yeah, I mean, Ms. Tompkins, if you have any comments about why, I'm happy to have you throw them Absolutely. out. Absolutely. So the the um, the tie between ELA and literacy and social studies they dovetail so nicely together. So we decided to capitalize on the opportunity of the literacy combination conversations within English language arts, and then begin um, bringing in social studies to consider uh, how literacy is so important. In social studies. <laughs> And then um, you can see we, you know, part of uh, what we were working on was getting more deeply aligned to STEAM. And, you know, we've implemented an elementary STEAM special. <laughs> Thanks to the board and your support for uh, allowing that to happen. And that, that was huge for multiple reasons, not only 
uh, making sure that teachers get proper planning time within the elementaries. But you know, there really was a need uh, for that to be a component of uh, our district. And then um, I will say one thing that our team uh, believes that is missing uh, from our strategic plan, and we're going to work to create some language to bring back to you, is that you know MTSS is really something uh, that needs to be called out in our strategic plan, and it currently is not in there anywhere. Um, that, that has become a focal point for us, and it really is the umbrella under which we make all of our decisions, and Stacy and Mrs. Th or Mrs. Spencer and Mrs. Tompkins are helping lead that, but with a huge team of people that um, again, this is a focal point for us and it's not called out on our strategic plan. So just to find that for the yes, I'm right? sorry. MTSS, multi-tiered systems of support. Um, so I don't know if you have any other comments about, you know, the importance of why that's so important to us or why we need that in there, but. Yeah, so the MTSS process, having a framework in place to respond to students proactively, whether their needs are academic or behavioral, um, is important for us to make sure that they're engaging in their academics to the fullest you know, capacity. We're trying to remove those barriers, catch um, them when are struggling so we can remediate those issues so then they can continue to engage in their academic learning. So having a structure, it's not just about kids who are struggling, it's about all kids. Um, and we look at not only um, students who are struggling to engage academically, but then on the enrichment side, how are we also identifying proactively those students who need to be stretched and enriched um, as part of that overall MTSS process? And what we love about the MTSS process is if you want to talk about something that is universally accepted and bringing us that necessary and desired alignment as a district, it is MTSS. So um, we, what we will do is I think we are getting close to, I look at I'm look, Becky shaking her head. We're getting close to a point where we would like to bring you a presentation, uh, a more detailed presentation about MTSS. So uh, we'll do that at a future meeting. Ask a quick question about MTSS. Is it at all, I mean, I'm used to the acronyms, but like positive behavior intervention. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yes. supports or response to intervention. Is it in the same kind it's of both. wheelhouse? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Multi-tiered systems of support so includes be... RTI or academic response okay. and PBIS, which is the positive behavior component. So, so it's, it's combination of Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a whole child of program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. I've heard these these acronyms for many years. Yeah. Now they're now we're putting it in one sandwich. Yeah. I like yeah. that. Putting it in one sandwich like and, and that, extremely yeah. focused on literacy and how how students get frustrated uh, when they can't read uh, up to grade level. So it, it's it's a combination of all of the above, and it's a good way to look at it. Putting it in a sandwich, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It really is a sandwich. So. So we will come back to you with some uh, recommendations of how we can get that into our um, strategic plan, but also, um, you know, we just wanted to give you an update that, so everything that you will see as Mr. Long clicks, <laughs> see it's on target. So if you see those symbols, that means we are on target with that area. Um, we are meeting our goals and keeping up with progress. Um, if you don't see a target, it doesn't mean that we're off track, it just might mean that it might not be time for that area. Some of the other, I mean, there are a lot of initiatives on here. So, it, you know, we're tackling the ones that we think are most important um, in alignment. So the second one up there, you are well aware that we went through a data uh, process to identify a data warehouse. Um, so that was led by Mr. Fritz last year and Mr. Long has taken over that and the pilot program is beginning. So. We're happy to report that we're on progress there or on track with progress there. We'll move on to the next one. Also an academic achievement. Um, and you can just see um, professional learning opportunities. I mean, realistically, that is something that we make sure that we are providing uh, continuously. Uh, and Mrs. Wagner and Mrs. Tompkins do a great job with their teams. Uh, Mrs. Spencer and others trying to make sure that we have relevant professional development opportunities, not only aligned with our current facility plans, but with where we are as a district and where we're headed. And I would say a lot of our work right now is tied into that MTSS process that we just spoke about, but also making sure that we're utilizing our facilities 
uh, in the manner that we intended when we built those out. Um, and I will let my dear friend Wagner talk a little bit about portrait of an aviator because it used to be portrait of a graduate. I always tell Mrs. Wagner I don't like you know anything that's like wrote or like everyone has it across the district or across the state. So and actually portrait of a graduate is a trademarked um, I'll say terminology. So we changed it, of course, and we aviated. <laughs> we put it in the aviator word. So, yes, imagine that. So remember, this is a these are our three year goals. So we are um, on target with. Um, he just has two. to lift yet. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, so uh, in the second year, we were able to bring the portrait of a graduate team together, identify the competencies, and kind of put um, some descriptors around them. We took those competencies and put them in front of students and also staff just to get some clarity and some feedback on how we might be able to just be a little bit more clear in that. And so we had some professional learning on that back in the, um, in the spring. So this upcoming year, then the goal is to, um, solidify those competency categories, provide some professional learning with our, um, teaching staff, but also tie it directly. And it actually has been, that's something Mrs. Tompkins, when she works with course of study, she infuses all those competencies like empathetic communicator or whatever it may be into those types of um, conversations with the teachers as well. So it's, it's, it's not living out here. The goal is that it's just integrated. Awesome. Thank you. So moving on to the V, vibrant community partnerships. Um, the, the first one was excuse me, closely aligned to um, really opportunities that we can give um, to impact student learning with, I'll say, outside organizations, connections to businesses, organizations, universities, nonprofits, creating an internship program, and we're well on our way uh, through that. And we credit our uh, business advisory council in making those connections, but also uh, career exploration seminars started last year at the high school and were well received. So we're hoping to uh, expand upon that and kind of take the next steps there. But just to remind the board, you know, it was that it was tough to implement that new thing with a brand new principal at the high school. So, um, he, but I give him a lot of credit uh, working with uh, Mrs. Dowenhauer. She she does an amazing job and she's a ball of energy. So. She was able to get those up and running and we're excited. She's already hitting up the BAC members to get more uh, going. So uh, exciting time for uh, our students to be able to make those connections. And uh, with our schedule change at the high school, Abe's Bell is separate from lunch now. So they do have some built-in time that they can do some of these things. Uh, the second one there, uh, talking about uh, just career pathways. Um, this is where I, I need some of the board's help because, you know, as you read it, there are some things that we are required to do by the state to, I'll say, essentially track uh, a student's pathway uh, beyond graduation. Um, we're reviewing the timeline because I can say we have not made um, as much progress on here, but just the change in administration and the focus on culture has put this one, I'll say, further on the back burner than some of the other topics. But um, I just think this is one where it would help me um, greater to understand as a district, like, what is the intent of this objective and should we do any revision with this? If it's more clearly stated, if we just want to know postgraduate, what are the students doing? You know, that's a little more clear to me. This was kind of a I'll say very wordy, and if that's what we're trying to get at, I think there is some things that we can put into place that will allow us to track that post-graduation. Uh, the things that I've looked into, I will tell you from a survey standpoint, it's only as good as the contact information that we have once students leave. So we have to collect all those email addresses or personal information to get the information, and they actually have to keep up with them because one of the companies that I looked at, they would do a survey at graduation, they would do one at 18 months, and then they would do one at like five years. But they said their success wanes as they get later in those years because you know kids change emails, they change phone numbers. So, But if that's the intent, and I was trying to recall, again, two plus years ago, 
what was the intent behind this area? So, well, Mr. Lewis, you'll recognize that Mrs. Bitter and I have been working on the foundation program, and I think there's a real connection between that work and this work on the strategic plan. Agreed. Also, I'm wondering if it's not the, it's not the student or the graduate's email that you should be tracking, but maybe the parents, and as as another alternative to we should have know. that information. Yeah. Yes. But. So we'll if that if if I'm hitting it correctly, I may write that for a little more clarity and a little more of directness of what we're trying to get, and then kind of head down that pathway. Okay. Did you want to expand a little bit on the foundation? You're gonna you're gonna go ahead and define that a little bit, and then come back to us. Yeah, and I think one of the things that, based on what Mr. Comerford said, I think we might be able to embed that component. Yeah. Of alumni support in there. Yeah, I see a direct tie-in. Yeah, it absolutely. I agree. Kind of yeah. Yeah, I agree. We don't want to be duplicating efforts either. So. <laughs> Yeah, and what, and just I'm just going to add one tiny little layer to please we may kind of guide you. We, Mr. Comfort and I talked about how it would be positive if we could connect current students with alumni uh -huh. in the chosen uh -huh. field. So it let's say you thought you wanted to go to medical school, wouldn't it be great to connect with a student who was in medical school or business school? And maybe that's something that already happened two years ago when this was written, but that is kind of a a great way to great. also consider not just having their contact information and knowing what they're doing, but actually connect current with with the past of a student who was here in the past. Yeah, I think that's, that's a great idea. idea. Yeah, love, love it. Love it. So our next area, uh, E, excellence and operations. Uh, I, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to steal, Mister. Uh, levels thunder here <laughs> but we all know what's going on with master facility plans i don't need to cover all of those areas but i will say one of the pieces that i think is important is the amount of collaboration that happens between mr lovell uh, mrs tompkins mrs wagner and mrs right to not only connect with teaching and learning but make sure our communications are out there showing that connection between uh the, the different components so i think that's important that people see that what they help support and purchase is going to have a direct correlation to our instructional practices. So I know that was very important to us as we were through that planning. Uh, and then the second one, uh, this is another one that again, uh, you know, as, I, as I've looked at this and, and spent some time on it, when I, when I worked with our um, company, the impact group, this was the one that it was kind of confusing of what are we trying to accomplish? So develop and communicate a development program to internally and organically grow the district's leadership team, create a su strategic succession plan to help attract and maintain high quality leaders. So when I think about that, you know, we've had a lot of leadership change. So, you know, I think we've tried to attract and maintain high quality leaders. Uh, is this, is the intent, the, the objective to have an internal program to grow our own internal leaders? Or is it for me to, because it kind of seems to be both in one objective. So are we trying to bring, recruit and get the best from outside? Or is it we continue to develop internal staff members? And, and it, it was funny because when we were doing the new teacher orientation today, there were a lot of um, administrators that talked about that they have been here for a long time and worked their way up through the ranks. So I just want to make sure that I'm clear on the objective because this one is one I will say, other than the, the things that we've been doing, there's not been a new program like developed in this area. So um, I can tell you that we're internally working on some plans to um, engage younger leaders that want to possibly move into administration um, and some, I'll say, mentorship and uh, guidance like programs that we are thinking about creating internally. Uh, but, you know, from a recruitment attraction standpoint, I will say every team member on our team does that intentionally just to, I, I think you always want to have a deep bench, so to speak. You want to know people that if a position opens up that you have a list of people that you organically would call 
um, to see if they might have an interest in interviewing. It doesn't mean you guarantee them a position or that it's automatic. It's, hey, you may have to work through a process to um, get the position. So I just, I wanted to throw it out there for you know, just seeking some clarity on that item because it seemed to be kind of like and or both or so I just I wanted to get your take on it before we uh, thought about how to address that. I mean, I, I see that you can do it as both. I mean, we do want to attract the best candidates for every one of our positions. So if that comes from the outside, great. Um, but I think there needs to be um, intention on developing our younger staff to have a pathway to grow in their careers and grow with the administration. So I don't see it as an and or an or. I personally see it as, as a both. Yeah. I agree with Mr. Bell. I mean, just reading it looks like it's both, but it's saying that, that we would like for you to develop and then communicate that program of how you would like to do both. I guess I see it as both. I don't see it as one or the other. But I do think a key piece of that is developing something internally to allow people to grow and and hopefully, as you said, Mr. Lewis, because I was there this morning as well, you know, have those positions where people can grow their careers and, and be lifelong aviators. Um, so I think also realizing that some, you know, that you sometimes need to go outside of the organization to get an expertise that maybe isn't here. And that's always good too. Right. Infusion of new people is always yep. good. I appreciate the clarity. That that helps tremendously. Mm -hmm. So we will make sure that again, just because it doesn't have a target on it, doesn't mean that we don't there. have some things around it. It just means that we want to make sure that clarity was there, and we may rewrite it so that it's more clear that it's a both um, situation. I think it needs rewritten. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Number three, um, mostly around uh, technology areas. So, uh, just some things that I would mention that you know. Uh, we are on target with, you know, we just put a uh, M a new MLS uh, in place and, and working through that. And uh, Mr. Long and his team have done a phenomenal job communicating, making people comfortable, offering trainings. Um, same thing with like the ViewSonic uh, digital displays. You know, you can get any training as a staff member that you want. Like Mr. Gutermuth is amazing at just really putting it into a pathway that helps people understand how can they use it and be better instructors with it. So uh, again, I give the board a lot of credit. That was an amazing resource that you allowed us to return back to instructional technology uh, with Mr. Gutermuth and it's paying dividends. Uh, I saw him here all summer, you know, training people and helping people with their use of technology and, and the understanding of Canvas, um, both uh, with the ViewSonic and with Canvas. So um, our Chromebook refresh cycle is great. And again, it wouldn't be able to happen without your support. And then um, I, I always am so impressed with our technology team in general. They're, they are always up to date on infrastructure um, and making sure that our our speed and, you know, all the, uh, you know, they always talk about dark fiber and all these different things that are well above my understanding of technology. But it's amazing that they keep us in such great shape uh, comparative to the needs, and they always seem to be up ahead of the curve uh, when it comes to that, that those components. So, Mr. Lewis, with that technology, you know, with that piece going back to you know the IT department. Maybe this question is for you, Mr. Long. Has there been sort of a paring down of all the different types of applications that are being used, so that it is actually being vetted through you as well as imagine curriculum so it's not just like a free-for-all yes absolutely so yeah we're working on what i would like to have is basically as a new member in the district you have a list of like these are all the cool resources that we have available to us so we're working on like coming up with something like that but certainly we have a process by which if you want to utilize a tool or a resource we're working with voting administrators to say okay go to your voting administration let's have a conversation about this so that we're not purchasing and utilizing stuff all over the district. When another building might be using it, we might go to get a discount on something. Um, so just trying to better understand that, that is a big uh, challenge to tackle, but mm -hmm. we're certainly working on that. Okay, thank you. So the next one is another one that just, again, input from you and potential revision. It 
seems to be a long winded way to talk about some communication best practices, but it says, you know, providing training and support regarding internal communication best practices, which, you know, we do a lot of things intentionally to communicate internally, develop clear administrative expectations for all forms of internal staff communications, and, you know, through the different levels, timely updates, ensure all staff members are knowledgeable and informed regarding important district information. It just kind of like seems like a one long run on sentence of like all the things communication. So I, I, I would like to try to find a way to pare it down to really target like what are we trying to do? Uh, is it that we think there needs to be more clear or strategic internal communication? If that's the case, then we can. I think that's what we need to say is more strategic internal communication. So I'm just trying to think of less wordy ways to say things that I can explain it to staff. Yeah, I think this, I mean, I read this as sort of um, district office communication outward and buildings to district office and how that works better. So two-way communication. I think so, yeah. I do agree with you that it's very wordy to say something which is basically you know, strategic communication. Right. Okay. That give you enough. Okay. I would. I mean, it is very wordy, but I hope what it what it means is that you would try to make things more concise, and sh not just on the plan itself, but the actual communication. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Strategic. And 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 concise and consistent. More like that consistent. Thank you. That's great feedback. And again, I, I know that some of this seems, you know, lengthy, but this is an important document for us as a district. And we do need your feedback. And this is the only time to get it from you. So, you know, these are critical components that, you know, I know you all spent a lot of time in, engaging in. And, you know, again, we're getting close to that time where we need to re-engage in that process. So. Uh, we'll talk about that at a, a future uh, meeting. I think the very last clause on that is very important, Mr. Lewis, the avoid selective pockets and siloed information. Um, that's where certain people know things and other people don't know things. And in the spirit of transparency and communication, I think that that clause needs to be, um, the spirit of that clause needs to be maintained. Great. Will do. So number five, um, Mr. Long, if you can go ahead and check it, go ahead. And, so we got a check mark there. So I, I don't think there's much more that we can do here from a standpoint of like, we have really gone all out with doing things around staff morale, culture of appreciation. We have the awesome aviator program that happens monthly. Any staff member is eligible to be nominated for that. We have teachers of the year uh, at every building at the end of the year, including then the one we submit to the, the celebrate excellence um, banquet. Uh, we have department staff members of the year from any, every department uh, in the classified staff. And then I'm happy to report we also uh, will be um, successful in the longevity recognition. We are prepared to not only are we going to recognize people and have them stand up at opening day, but we also have um, wings. Everyone will get their wings, their pins. Uh, but we will go through and make sure that everyone gets their pins 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that was a SAC project, and that was non-monetary staff recognition. And Dr. Davis and others were uh, involved in that process. And really importantly, several teachers from our staff were on that team and uh, recommended that this was what they would like to see. So I'm happy to report that that's come full circle. So... You know, I'd say it's a check mark because I really can't think of anything else that we, and we're not going to stop recognizing staff. We're always going to try to find ways to celebrate staff, but I do think we have done to the spirit of what was in the strategic plan. So, um, and then number six, uh, you know, certainly wellness and self-care remain uh, a core topic and uh, certainly uh, be, there are multiple people that work on this uh, all the time, but um, you know, truly focus on staff and making sure that they're taking care of themselves and providing them opportunities, whether it be through our health insurance or through um, other opportunities within the district that we're making that a, a priority for them. So 28 days of age. 28 days of age. 
And then the last one on the E number seven, um, I think, and I'm gonna say that this one may have gotten added um, during a summer meeting, <laughs> um, just because we thought it was extremely important that security be in the operations of the district. So, you know, looking at all aspects of our physical security, making sure that we have best practice strategies. And I will tell you, our first responders constantly tell us it's, it's training, 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 training. It's not buying new equipment. It's not buying bulletproof windows. It's not, it is training. So uh, we've done a security assessment and we, we continually do a security assessment. Um, I actually remember my first year in the district, we did a walkthrough and did a security assessment. So that's been an ongoing process. Um, we have had threat assessment, formal threat assessment training, but um, I am happy to report we have had threat assessment in place well before it was ever state mandated. I'm very proud of that. That was something we put into place, I think, back in like 2012, 2013. Um, that just became mandated recently. Um, and then our security upgrades, Mr. Lovell and his team have been uh, phenomenal in securing grant funding from the state, writing grants, making sure that we're constantly upgrading um, our, our physical security and really being thoughtful and deliberate in our master facility plan about that area. So uh, we're on target. Uh, there may be some other things that we do, but um, we'll continue that work because we know school support, school security is important uh, not only to us, but to our community. Oh, and then the last one, S, student-centered culture and learning. Uh, we we have done a culture and climate assessment. You know, we've completed that in January of 23. We got the results in spring of 23. Uh, I only have a check mark there. It's going to continue to be an annual survey uh, that we will do every January. Uh, and I think we were encouraged by the positive results. Um, the one thing that, and it actually, uh, I think I answered my own question. I was going to talk to you about um, the, the, the wording of where it says over the next three years, that's on one of the pages of our, um, at the front of this section for the strategic plan. And it talks about that encompasses each child's health aspirations and belonging. It felt like something was missing there. Like, is it sense of belonging? But um, I did hear from um, it was one of our sites today that might have been talking about belonging and how important that is. So I don't know if like there's words missing in front of that, but as I read it, it just didn't feel like it read correctly. Um, and I was almost thinking of changing the word, but when I heard the psych say that today, I'm like, okay, maybe we don't want to change the word. So I don't know what, if anybody has any thoughts on that, but it just felt like something was missing when I read it today. Or not I, think, today, but. I think belonging is the right word. You could say feeling, you know, feeling like you belong or sense. But belonging is a, a belonging. is a or really important belonging. word that should be used. I think. Yeah, there have just been my reading Maybe of it, and it just sounded weird used. to me. Yeah. It's not if everybody else is fine with it. Uh, I actually think it it's actually really the right word. You know, I think, as I'm sitting yeah. here reading that, I mean, I think when you think about some of the issues that our students um, struggle with, you know, whether it's a bullying situation or just feeling isolated. And that really hones in on sometimes I think what's missing. And I think it will absolutely impact the plan before it, the strategic thing before it, which is security, because yeah. ultimately when students are feeling a sense of positive culture in their schools and they feel like they're belonging, automatically there will be a, a safer environment for every child. Even if something comes from the outside, there's still gonna be a better cooperation and help in that regard. All right, so we'll leave that alone. Yeah. Um, and then the second one up there is really essentially taking data from uh, the culture and climate survey and assessment and embedding it into the work uh, for portrait of an aviator, and uh, again, happy to report that we're on target there with that work. That's so. yeah, that's a, a focus of our work this year. Uh, number three, uh, a wellness task force. Um, I, I will tell you that again, um, with everything else, the dates of this one are actually 2024 work, so we can say we're on target because it hasn't started yet. Um, essentially that it, it was moved back a little bit, but 
Um, I also just put what's the intent in, in a, a possible revision because there seems to be a lot of components here. Um, you know, talking about wellness, talking about uh, well-being, it just seems to have a lot of uh, additional components down at the bottom of that one. So uh, we may want to come back to you at some point with a, a possible revision there of just, uh, again, trying to make it a little more succinct and direct of what are we trying to accomplish there, which I do think it's centered around the wellness uh, a component and making sure that we're um, being mindful of that with our, our students, but it just needs to be, I think, honed in a little bit. And we have time since it's 2024 work, so. And you may take a look at the policies themselves because they, they're worded so nicely. Mm -hmm. uh, we got some really great language from the O from the Ohio School Board Association around this subject, you might find some wording in there that will help kind of align that. Not that you have to put the policy in the strategic plan, but no, no. it'll be I get good. What you it'll be some we certainly want that alignment though. Yeah. You do. Yeah, absolutely. And the the number four up there is again, it's also 2024 work. It's uh, a district equity audit. Um, and you know when when you think of equity audit, I think people immediately go to like diversity and inclusion type equity, and and that's not necessarily what uh, this equity audit is. It's you know, when we talk about making sure that all students have equal opportunities, that's what we're talking about more here with an equity audit. So um, would this be at all? You know, we have the four elementary schools. Would this also kind of look at the different schools? as well, not an individual school or student. Excuse but just look at the, the larger picture of our school. We have not, you know, with it being 2024 work, we haven't dug in sure, really but deep here. Just looking um, at we started looking at like, I'll say potential tools mm -hmm. um, to help us with the equity audit. That's about it. The four elements are very different. Um, mm -hmm. That's something that's brought to my attention a lot in the community. So. I think that would be helpful. So the last couple of slides, um, I don't know if you've ever seen this. This is like, I'll say, just out of draft form, but it kind of captures um, those components uh, that were part of the, the competencies that were part of Portrait of an Aviator and are listed below. And this was actually a graphic designed by one of our students. So. so a great way to capture everything. So again, we're on target yeah. there. Um, and then the last slide, um, you know, we had desired outcomes. If we are, if we are being successful in our strategic plan, are we hitting some of those things? Um, I, have a, I have a question about, I feel like um, the box ensure academic growth and rigor for every student. I, I kind of recall us having a conversation about the word achievement because there's a difference between achievement and growth. And it seems to me to be lost here. And these are great. I'm not saying that we we take one of them away and add, you know put something about achievement, but I'm just wondering why that fell off. Mrs. Weiss, and I'm trying to remember as well, is it, if you look at the box that says achieve and maintain top tier ranking, because that is, from a state perspective, if you will, how the achievement is measured, was that it? I, I don't, I, I just don't like when we're talking about academic academics and the word that's always in there is just growth mm -hmm. because growth is going in a direction, but achievement is a level, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I worry when you say growth, you could, everybody could have growth and it could be this much, but achievement is not, is not right? And so I'm wondering if that's something that we need to think about. Yes, achieve and maintain top tier ranking on the Ohio School Report Card in a roundabout way. Yes, you are then getting the academic achievement of those students yeah. in that district. But I, I just, I don't want to lose sight of it. And I don't want us to be a district that is just focused solely on growth. And I will say, do you understand yeah, what I, I, I will say, I, I, I this is Tom because I've had this conversation. Can we add academic growth? Can we say ensure academic growth, rigor, and achievement? And just add the word, have all I three. I don't know. That's something to think about. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, because I like growth and rigor, but I like achievement also. Yeah. So, I, I will say, and I know this about our team, 
we talk to our teaching staff all the time about growth and achievement being that's our that's our north star of both. each is both you can't really just focus on one without the other so um i think one of the things and i know we've talked about this in the past the reason we care so much about growth is that we don't also want to become a, a school district that just cares about test scores and our teachers feel that and I, I i actually said that on the new teacher tour today we are not a district that just cares about test scores yes they are important yes we care that they that's what we're measured by but we also care about making sure that our students are making gains um, and that's why i like that little look blur below with a focus on improvement for all i agree with everything it said but i think it's important that we have both components and sure that make sure that we're clear about what those components mean um, to our staff because i never want them to feel like we only care about reaching to the test and i've heard that before in our district and i always tell them that's never been a communication that I have received wow. in my 12 years here from any school board that I've worked with. So. Well, and Mrs. Wagner always had, Mrs. Wagner, what do you say about that? About when people say, oh, you're just teaching to the test. You talk about, a lot about, well, if you're teaching the standards, the test is to measure. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if the if the test is designed to measure the standards and you're teaching the standards, you're really teaching to the standards. You're not teaching to the test. That's correct. Yeah. That's what. Mm -hmm. So I am sorry for, and you know how important this is. So, and I know it had been a, a little while since we updated him. What we'll do is, you know, as we progress in our discussion about our board calendar, we'll have it in as a regular, I think probably biannual update, unless we need to have more frequent updates with you. Um, it's critically important. I do know, again, we're coming upon a time where we probably need to revisit uh, a chance to really, and it's going to be, again, it's hard work to dig in and do that, that work, but it's probably going to be time to refresh um, and at least take some things out. And there might be things that we need to add. So, you know, maybe that'll be things it, that. Yeah, maybe we just do it like in a chunk, you know, a chunk at a time. Really. We, do the, <laughs> we do the A or we do the B. That's, or that's probably a good way to do it. I mean, we do it's manageable. That so, sure. And I'm glad that the link is up there. And if you want updates to our strategic plan, we'll make sure that this gets loaded. This presentation gets loaded uh, to the website as well. And I, I do not have my notes in front of me, but I felt like when we had the culture study, when he presented to us, he had some really good nuggets in there that mm -hmm. that I think are strategic plan material. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is an opportunity for point. you. And he gave us some and I could go back and look, but I know there was some good stuff in there. And I think those are things we really should look at. Um, that would then be dat, you know data driven and it would be, um, supported by what our community and our students and our families are telling us. And they're sort of the, the issue, the, the stuff yeah. that we need to kind of work on that. I would definitely go back and look at that and I'll do that too. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. work with our Lots of great data. Right. Some good, good there was a really good thing. Yeah. I remember him again with all of us. Thank you. Yeah, you can remove that one. Now we'll move to master facility update. Um, as you know, I could talk probably for about two hours about all the work that's happening around the district, but I think I'll focus my time tonight on the junior high specifically, because I think that that probably was mostly on the top of um, folks' minds. If you have had the opportunity to drive past the junior high down Cooper, you obviously have seen the entire old building removed, and we now have a parking lot in front of the school, which seems so simple and practical, but it was an extremely important step um, for our critical path to getting students in the building. So um, we're very excited about that. Mr. Long, if you wanna move, um, this is the latest drone shot we got from our partners at SHP. They come out monthly um, and take these at each of our sites. But I thought what I would do is just kind of walk through this with you a little bit and kind of let you know where we're at um, with some of the work that's being done over there. Um, before I start, though, I, I just want to mention um, how much of a pleasure it's been to be able to work with our junior high team. Um, obviously, we've gone through transitions with many buildings now in the districts at the many starts of the school year, and they've all been extremely successful. 
Um, this one by far probably has been the most challenging from a logistics standpoint. And so uh, Ms. Shunk and her team over there have been just incredible to be able to sit down, um, cool heads, and just think through step by step by step. So we are where we are because it's been a collaborative team effort, and I just wanted to call that out. Um, so you can see there where that lot is. This is actually taken a few days prior to them finishing up the asphalt there, but I have marked the staff and visitor parking. Um, we've been working with our transportation department to ensure that um, the buses can get in there, the cars can get in there um, for the first day of school. Um, currently, the work right now is really mainly focused. Um, the site work right now is mainly focused on that future bus and event parking. Our goal is to get a top coat of pavement on that up on the upper lot. Um, with all the rain, though, we're just happy to have asphalt down, even if we have to do temporary striping. So to be able to be over in that future and bus and event parking and keep moving on that site um, so that we can get that set, um, hopefully our goal is by the beginning of October. Um, while that seems far out, um, there's a lot that goes into that. Um, I know you all love to talk about soil, but undercutting of the soil, um, doing what we need to do. Um, but thank you to you all for approving that change directive so we can keep the work moving there. Um, tonight, there's a change order, and I only mention it now and this time because there's a change order for work that we're doing on the northwest end of the site. And so that northwest end is north of the stadium. Um, the reason that we have a change order is because it, it's a long it's a long conversation, but it all has to do with moving the tennis courts. It was part of all the cost configuration of moving the tennis courts to the um, far east side back pro far back east side of the property. Um, so the goal is our critical path now is to get that work done in front of the stadium, kind of finish that up there um, and by the future bus event parking so that um, they can then focus on the back of the property where the tennis courts are going to be and the future field. So similar to EH Green, we're going to see a lot of dirt being moved around the property um, through the fall. Um, I think people will constantly wonder where, why, why are we moving dirt again? Um, but a lot of the dirt was stored in the back of the property to move to the front. Um, thinking about inside the building, um, it's everything you would expect in the final two to three weeks of starting school. Um, our custodial teams give them a shout out. Um, they have cleaned up layers and layers of dirt um, in that building, as you can imagine. Um, they get one area clean and there's another area that has more dirt. So the construction company comes through like any house you would build and they do a deep clean, but then things just keep settling. So shout out to Ms. Taylor and her team over there for just being on it and keep moving around the building. Um, when you walk in the building, you'll see furniture set up. You'll see teachers have been in there setting their classrooms up. Um, Mr. Long and his team have been diligently working on getting technology into our spaces. Some of the remaining aspects that we're really running after at this point is really just um, door control systems, um, things like that, that are just behind the scenes that you wouldn't know that we're working to get commissioned. The other um, big critical path that we have, which we don't believe we'll be able to complete by the first day, um, is the auxiliary gym hardwood floor. Um, hardwood floors are very temperamental, uh, meaning it has to be a very specific humidity and temperature in the building in order for them to install the wood. Um, and so we actually missed an important date for the aux gym because we were doing some fishing on the pro the the commissioning on the um, HVAC systems. And so that just put us back a little bit on that. But luckily for us, we've got the main gym, we've got the field outside, so we have spaces for the kids. Um, but overall, we are um, extremely thrilled uh, to welcome back our teachers this coming Monday into the space. Um, and then most importantly, not that our teachers don't count, but most importantly, our students the following week, they're going to be blown away um, by the environments and just um, what the community has given them to um, learn, teach and learn in. So we're very excited about that. Happy to answer any questions. No, I just wanna thank you and thank the, the entire staff for ensuring that we get the school open on time. I've had a lot of community members 
just amazed as they drive by and that building was finally gone to see what was wrong, you know, to, to, to move oh, on. They are doing something. <laughs> just, you know, a lot of very positive uh, feedback from the community on how nice just the exterior of the building was. Yeah. And I think when they do have the opportunity to come through it in October, November, when they do an open house, it's going to be blown away by the learning yeah. spaces that we've created for many future Yes. Um, I think I ran a red light because I hadn't been at Cooper Road for a while. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> the building's gone. The building's gone. Yeah. 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 It's amazing how um, once that comes down, how it all just kind of hits together. Yep. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I need a motion for the change order Sycamore Junior High School construction project. So moved. Second. Questions from the board? Number four. Aye. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mrs. Bitter. Aye. Mr. Ballant. Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for transportation and practical. So moved. Second. Mrs. Slogan, please call the roll. Mr. Comerford. Aye. Mrs. Weiss. Aye. Mrs. Bitter. Aye. And Mr. Ballant. Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the mem memorandum of understanding with OPC number 243, transportation incentives. So moved. Second. Listening. Just uh, this is part of the um, settlement with the contract, and there was a previous MOU that was approved to try to help recruit um, transportation employees. And through the collective bargaining process, it was extended to also educational assistance. I think you encouraged us to communicate with you about what are the areas that we're having trouble hiring. It's been transportation and educational assistance. So we want to try to continue to think of outside the box ways to find new employees and good employees. So thank you for indicating that to us. Appreciate that. They're, they're, this has been a great partnership with OPC and and again, they they understand if it doesn't work, we'll try something else or look other other creative ways. Mrs. Slogan, please call her. Mrs. Bitter. Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Cumberford? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion Motion for the Memorandum of Understanding of Senate 243, Educational Assistance and Swimming Compensation. So moved. Second. Any questions from the board? I, I just had um, a question because I didn't see an amount in the, in the understanding. <laughs> it's, it's, it's double. Oh. It's one. I think it's one extra hour of pay for educational assistants who have to support a oh, student in the swimming. Okay, thank you. And it's just, it's been, a, I think this has been something I've heard for at least my <laughs> whole career here. It's just, it's uncomfortable to get into a swimming pool as uh, as a uh, adult around a bunch of students. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do it. So I understand, I completely understand it. So, Thank you for the clarification. Sure, and I'm glad we could work together to uh, come up with an agreement. So, Mrs. Logan, please call me. Mrs. Bitter, aye. Mr. Comerford, aye. Mrs. Weiss, aye. Mr. Ballant, aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the Memorandum of Understanding Sycamore Education Association High School Dean of School. So moved. Second. You know, this is a collaboration. Um, I really appreciate uh, Mrs. Grace and SEA working with me to, um, you know, just address uh, a need that we identified at the high school and how we can move forward with uh, um, the dean of students position that currently we have. <laughs> dean of students position at the high school. We also have one uh, at the junior high. Um, so, uh, and you know, later in the agenda, you'll see it's our desire to. Um, assist that individual in trying to move into an administrative role and certainly understand um, SEA's desire to, you know, protect their contractual obligations and, and rights within their recognition clause. And Dean of Students is a recognized position uh, for SEA, so certainly understand the, the concern. And I appreciate uh, the collaboration. It was uh, a great process. We appreciate the support of SEA as well. Any additional questions from the board? <clears throat> Mrs. Logan? Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Bitter? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of an agreement with Hamilton County Developmental Disability Services. 
So moved. Second. <coughs> Questions for the board? Mrs. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Kemmerford? Aye. Mrs. Bitter? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of supplemental positions robotics. So okay. moved. Second. Another great collaboration with uh, the Sycamore Education Association as as we heard during our, our meeting uh, with when the robotics teams came to present to us that it was a need. Um, I did not realize that we did have a supplemental. We had one um, for the, the first tech challenge or the FTC team. Uh, Mrs. Jarvis was serving in that role, but um, working with Mrs. Grace and, and she has a team of auditors that there are teachers that kind of audit and look at all the positions across the district. And I think they felt like this was very low for the amount of hours that is spent. And I know Mrs. Jarvis spends a ton of hours of doing that. So we're recommending moving that supplemental from three to five, which is more in alignment with the duties for that role. In addition, uh, the first robotics challenge team or FRC would be a supplemental level four. So that would be an additional supplemental. And then the first Lego league challenge, first Lego league explorer level three. And, and where those kind of fit is FTC, FRC or kind of junior high, high school teams. Uh, the other ones are kind of like elementary to green. So the way we set this up is there might be an opportunity that like two people might split level three um, to be able to work with like grades two through four and five through six. Like it just depends on how it works out. So the way these work is we'll certainly post them and and certainly work to try to find staff members that are interested or, you know, obviously Mrs. Jarvis is already doing it, but um and then if for some reason we didn't have any staff members, then we would look outside. But I think our hope and SEA's hope is being able to recognize some individuals. We get some good people that are passionate about robotics to partner with our awesome volunteers that you have already seen from the robotics program. So um, again, thank you to Mrs. Grace and uh, Mr. McCullough, uh, Ms. Myers from the junior high, and I am getting someone. But Anyway, they all did an amazing job helping us get to uh, these recommendations. So, uh, Mrs. Logan, Ms. Colorado. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mrs. Bitter? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the resolution accepting the resignation of Ashwin Portillo as Dean of Students, employing him as an assistant. So moved. Second. Just a couple of comments. Um, you know, this is uh, again uh, an opportunity for someone that has has worked at our high school for a long period of time. Um, I, I think Mr. Cortiel has been here almost as long as I have, um, working in the dean of students role, and and it really has the need has transformed more into an assistant principal role than the dean of students duty. So. Um, this resolution is one of the pieces that he needs to be able to um, pursue uh, an alternative licensure to be an assistant principal. Um, one of the things that I, obviously I want to point out is that if for some reason that that alternative licensure would not go through, he does not lose the opportunity to be the dean of students. He would move back uh, to his previous role at the the current pay and wage that it's at. So um, we have some more steps that we have to work through with him, but um, after consulting with our, our legal counsel, this was the step that they recommended for us to work through to be able to make this uh, move happen, so. And this resolution is dependent on him getting his licensure by the end of the uh, principal. The, the next school year. And he's in his administrative licensure program um, but obviously this is, this is a need and we believe, uh, in collaboration with Mr. Porter and, uh, talking with him that it, it would certainly put this, the high school in a good situation from an administrative team standpoint. So. I just would like to clarify that he is, um, it is for a one-year alternative principal license, <clears throat> not to enroll into the alternative principal licensure pathway. That is correct. So just, okay. And there's a... There's a line item uh, in the resolution that talks about that he will finish. It's the board's expectation that he would finish his um, 
it, I, I always want to say permanent, but it, there is no licensure in Ohio like for us. It's permanent. It's a five-year license that it is our expectation that he would get a five-year license. And Mr. Lewis, I, I'm assuming that you will keep the board apprised of the progress Absolutely. and the status of that. Thank you. Any additional questions from the board? Welcome, please call the roll. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Bitter? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Ballant? Aye. Motion passes. Uh, moving on to Superintendent Other, Mr. Lewis. It's getting exciting because it's getting real. Uh, we've had a lot of activity. It's fun to see the students coming back into the building. So this week alone, uh, Get Connected Day was on Monday. Uh, Green 101 continues the rest of this week. So EH Green is busy. So if you notice the increase in traffic, you have students and parents coming to that building. I saw the line of traffic out on the Kenwood day when I was on the tour. So um, our, our uh, let me skip that one for now. Schedule pickup at the high school, uh, again, makes an active and vibrant campus. They, I have heard so many good compliments about how organized and how structured, and I know that sounds ridiculous, but if you've ever been to schedule pickup at our high school and the number of people on that campus, it can be overwhelming. So I've heard a lot, a lot of compliments. Marching band and athletics are in full swing, uh, leading to we have our first home football game on Friday versus King. So... We owe King some revenge from last year. It, it, it was not a very good home football or a way football game last year. So um, probably one of the coolest things. I know the board, we didn't get a chance to recognize Eugene Harney as we normally do. So um, I asked um, Mrs. Thomas, my assistant, to come up with a special way that we could do something for him. So she created um, picture frames with a picture of not only him, but then we have one for um, Manny Arbabi, who was our state champion in uh, indoor uh, track. But she also put a certificate in there and framed it for them. So I went and presented Eugene's at 7.30 in the morning at football practice so <laughs> in front of his entire team at the team meeting. And I think it was special. It made it um, special for him and his teammates got to celebrate with him. So um but thank you to uh, Coach Dottillo for giving me that opportunity because I'm sure he's like, we really don't need the superintendent interrupting our team meeting, <laughs> but he did allow me a few minutes. And then uh, probably, I always like to talk about some of the amazing things that our young people are doing. Uh, Jeremy Lim is a, I think he's going to be a senior. I feel like I've known Jeremy a long time, but Jeremy is um, a leader and he leads a group called the Asian Youth Alliance. Um, they had their annual workshop on August 5th at 10 a.m. And they had a, uh, a keynote speaker. So he asked me to come. It was on a on a Saturday at um, Crossroads in Mason or at near Crossroads in Mason. That was one, one of my uh, benchmarks of how to get there. But he um, did a phenomenal job. Just like he looks like a an adult up there speaking and introducing speakers and so impressive. But. So he's doing that and he's trying to make things better for Asian youth. But also on top of that, he is number one in the under 20 and he competes in the Philippines <clears throat> in fencing. He is number one in like on the Philippines team. So he just got back. He I met with him today. He just got back from the Philippines and his equipment failed, but he still finished in the top four. So in the nationals, like it would be like if in the United States, we have a national competition, he's over there competing in the Philippines. So I think he's going to end up being in like the Olympics or something as a fencer. So I'm like, I know that kid. That's awesome. So, and he's just a uh, awesome young man. So I did tell him I was going to mention that today, but he was also one of the people that spearheaded the, um, community conversation last time and he's already in my office we've got another one planned for september about uh stress and um you know helping students navigate that and again he's going to facilitate so it's nice to see our young people stepping up and leading um, and the last thing i'll mention is our district office team uh thank you to the board and and others for in the community for your understanding we took our entire district office team off-site on August 4th for a retreat and 
um, just I'll say the early returns from our team was that it felt really good to um, be treated, I think, as professionals and to seek out their input. And I will say it was fun to watch our staff lead almost every session of our retreat. So it was really cool. Um, we're definitely going to do it again because um, it was a great way to see people that work in one building connect and, and build those relationships. So uh, again, thank you for that tolerance of doing it. I think we decided we won't do it in August next year. I think we're going to seek out June. Got a little warm by midday outside. So uh, we'll try to do a, a better job of date selection. So that's all I have for you. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, moving on to the treasurer's consent agenda. Um, I need a motion for the approval of the July 2023 report. So moved. Second. This is London. Okay. Yes. Um, well, uh, thank you. And July of 2023, even though I wasn't officially here for that month, <laughs> um, I'm happy to prepare the information um, for you. Again, the report that is in your packet really is a snapshot of the very first month of the fiscal year for 2024, which is what we're in now, um, compared to fiscal year 2023. Um, and one of the main things that I want to point out um, during that, I mean, when you look at it, there's some things that, that kind of, you know, jump off the page, which might be, you know, cash balances and things like that. Um, when you look at fiscal year 2023, one of the things that impacted the beginning cash balance starting into this fiscal year were the advances and transfers from last fiscal year, which we, we talked about the facilities project, um, and that's the major component of that. And when you look at what happened in fiscal year 23, um, from the general fund to support those efforts compared to fiscal year 2022, it was um, almost three and a half times the amount of support from the general fund. So that was honestly the, the biggest impact there. But, um, but Mrs. Logan, the majority of those funds will be repaid over time. Correct. So when I say transfers and advances, there's a difference. Transfers is... The money goes there with no intention of it coming back. The advances is basically a loan. And so that's what has happened with, um, with the majority of those funds. Correct. Um, so that was the major in, uh, impact to that cash balance that I looked at. When I look at um, our expenditures from one year to the next, there are some things that that looked you know, higher this year than, than last. But then when I take a look at your overall budget, your temporary budget that's put in place, there's not any big alarms or red flags that, that look, that come up, you know, when I'm looking at that from a year to year basis. So we'll just take a look at things from month to month and as things, if there are anything, uh, any things that come up that um, we need to have further conversation on. We will. So, my my comment, and I know this is the first month, um, yes. and you know, over time that changes. Uh -huh. uh, but the number that jumps out the most to me on total expenditures is the plus eight point five five percent. So that is not a number that that this community or board has has ever been used to. Um, and we need to keep a very close eye on our expenditures to make sure that this is a snapshot of one month and not a trend that we're seeing occur over the entire. Um, year because that would have large implications on levy timings, Absolutely. cash reserves, and everything like that. So that that number jumped out on the page to me, but um, uh -huh. you know, it's just something we'll have to keep an eye on the next couple of months. Absolutely. Logan, I, I have a just a general question. Um, we receive a we receive a report every. At least once a month on our expenditures for the office for student services and the contracts that we have where does that sit in this picture here so 
the way that this report is put together is this is by object. So your salaries, benefits, um, purchase services, and so on. Our appropriations, which we will be coming to you next month, by policy, that is by fund and function. So the function kind of gives you more of an idea on those type of expenditures. So next month, when we start talking about appropriations, we can we can dive more into that. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ms. Logan, please call the roll. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mrs. Bitter? Aye. And Mr. Ballant? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the return of the 2023 fiscal year and advances to the general fund from federal grant funds. Second. Well, maybe you have a brief explanation of what this sure. is. We, we spoke um, prior about advances versus transfers. At the end of every fiscal year, if you have federal grant funds that you have spent money on, but you have not received those funds back, um, you can do two, one of two things. You can either advance money from the general fund or you can send a project cash request to requ request those funds so you wouldn't have to do an advance. This was handled by a cash advance, which is just a loan. So now the money is there, which is paying back the general fund. Great. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Logan, please call the roll. Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Bitter? Aye. And Mr. Balance? Aye. Motion passes. I need a motion for the approval of the personnel consent agenda. So moved. Second. Mrs. Logan, please call the roll. This is the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Weiss? Aye. Mr. Comerford? Aye. Mrs. Bitter? Aye. And Mr. Ballant? Aye. Motion passes. Other Board of Education business. Um, first off, the SAC update. I do. I did get an uh, update from Dr. Steger. Um, the, SAC, the SAC year is starting off with their social on August 31st, a meet and greet with new members and existing members. Uh, Mike Guerin is the new SAC cheer person. Uh, the team is working on coming up with a project list, which they'll be finalizing soon. And the first SAC meeting is on September the 11th at 7.30, and they do meet on the second Tuesday of the month. And they do have a, I, you know, I may, I'll say, ask for some assistance, because, uh, you know, with um, Dr. Steger, I don't know that she's going to be able to, they have a SAC social coming up. And I'll say, I don't know that any of us, I was going to ask for help, but now I just realized, I don't know that any of us are going to be able to go. This is on August 31st, which, um, which, our which I now have a junior high football game for a son. This is uh, working with all of you. Uh, so it's like, and I feel bad because they schedule it. And they're like, their expectation is that I'm there, but it's just, it's going to be a tough, if I can swing by for like a few minutes, I will try to fit it in, but um, and they really do. The nice thing about their so they're having it at OGB this year, oh, nice. which is really cool. Yeah. And so, I may have to send someone else from the team to that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, legislative update. I don't know. A few? <laughs> okay. I'm it. Um, okay, so thank you. So, the Ohio legislature is currently on summer break uh, with plans to return mid September. Um, the Ohio Department of Education um, released information on a timeline for the transition of the roles and responsibilities from the Ohio Department of Education to the newly formed Department of Education workforce. Um, the Department of Education workforce will be a cabinet level agency with a director that is appointed by the governor. Tutoring services, Governor DeWine announced that the state would be using $26 million from the governor's emergency education relief fund which was appropriated from Congress to help with the COVID pandemic, to fund tutoring services to help address students who experienced learning loss during the pandemic. The catch is that school districts have to use services of six approved vendors, so we cannot use our own educators. I don't know if after I'm done with this, if Ms. Tompkins or Ms. Wagner would like to comment on that. Um, new teacher apprenticeship program, Governor DeWine announced that Ohio's new teacher apprenticeship program 
which is designed to help Ohio address the educator shortage. The new program provides an additional career path for those wanting to become teachers. K-12 teachers are not currently part of the registered apprenticeship program in Ohio. The program is meant to replicate other successful programs where dedicated staff, such as paraprofessionals, custodians, and bus drivers are recruited by school districts to complete an apprenticeship and become teachers. There are some scholarships available in exchange for committing to teaching in a qualified, uh, qualifying Ohio school for at least four years. House Bill 250, prior to going on summer recess, Representatives Miranda, who's one of our representatives, and Richardson introduced um, House Bill 250 to revise the military enlistment diploma seal. Um, and the last thing I want to report on, which I think is, well, one of the, well, there's a lot of things about this report that are concerning, but this is a very concerning one for me. Um, House Bill 240, unlicensed chaplains in public schools. Ohio House Republicans have proposed new legislation that would permit public schools to employ unlicensed chaplains. Unlike other public school personnel who must be licensed by the state, the bill specifically outlines that these chaplains shall not be required to apply for a license or any type of certification with the State Board of Education. The only thing that they would be required to complete would be a criminal records check. Um, a similar bill recently passed in Texas. So this is another attempt to bring religion into public schools. Concerns expressed include that there are no standards, training, or accreditation that these chaplains are required to have. It is unclear what methodology these chaplains would employ to counsel students, chaplains wanting to convert students to their particular religion, and a complete disregard for the separation of church and that is all I have, and I didn't know if Ms. Tompkins or Mrs. Wagner wanted to com comment on the tutoring services and if that's something that Sycamore is considering or if they know anything about the approved vendors. Yes, so the, there are six approved vendors to provide high dosage tutoring in the areas of reading, one approved vendor in math. Um, myself and members of the team are attending webinars to learn about these tutors. Um, tutoring is done uh, synchronously. So it's live tutoring, three days a week, small group instruction during the school day. So we are looking into the possibility of tutoring to support some of our, um, our, our um, reading intervention at different levels to see if that's something that is, is viable and, and looking into. So we are, um, the, the tutors are all been vetted through the Ohio Department of Education. Um, so that is something that we're exploring the possibility to see if it's Worth investing more time in. Tutoring services will be offered beginning October, November, and carry through about September of next year. But it's a short term opportunity. Okay, thank you. That's all I have. Um, I have nothing else for board miscellaneous. Um, we'll do Mrs. Lowther. I need a motion to adjourn. You, you don't have to have a motion to adjourn. Okay, we will adjourn this. <laughs> 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 <laughs>